Hello, my third grade friends. Welcome back. This is Dr. Davis ready to start our next lesson. Does anyone remember what our new domain is called? The human body, systems and senses. Now, once again, I know that you already know some things about it because you learned some things in kindergarten and first and second grade. So we're just going to build on that knowledge. So let's start off with reviewing. So this time the review is going to ask you some questions. Do the systems in our bodies work independently or are they interconnected? Now that word interconnected, remember, that was one of those words that we did a word work on. So independent, alone, interconnected, which means it's connected or dependent on something else. They are interconnected, so they need each other for everything to function appropriately in the body. Next question. What term describes the skull, spine, and rib cage? Do you remember? The term axial bones. That is the term used to describe skull, spine, and rib cage. Next question. Why are the skull, spine, and rib cage called axial bones? Why is that term important? Well, the axial bones in the human body are bones that support the center of the body. Let's review some more. What is another reason why the axial bones are important? So other than they are the center support, what's another reason? Well, they protect the most important organs in our body, such as our brain, our heart, and lungs. Next question, why is the skeletal system as a whole important to the human body? Why is the skeletal system important? Think about it. What would happen if we didn't have a skeletal system? The skeleton is a framework that keeps the body from toppling over. Remember, if you didn't have a skeletal system, your body would just be limp. It would just be flimsy and just fall over. Now we are on lesson three. In today's read aloud, you will hear about appendicular bones. Oh, that's a big word. Listen to the read aloud to find out how bones are connected and how they move. So let's begin. Hello again. Before we begin, I want to know who is able to correctly spell the big V word that we talked about the last time we met. Who would like to try and spell vertebrae. Oh, I see some people out there that think that they can do it. All right, get the letters of the word vertebrae in your head. Spell it out loud. Or you can write it down. Okay, let's check to see if you are correct. Here we go. First letter, V. E, er, R, T, E, that's the tricky letter, B, B, R, A, E, vertebrae. I hope a lot of my friends out there got that correct. Wow, I'm impressed. Today, we're going to talk about another big word, and that word is appendages. Can you say appendages with me? Appendages. I was quite small the first time I ever heard that word. I used to cling to my mother's leg all the time, and I would often hear her say, Ricardo is my little appendage. I never knew what it meant. Do you? Now, years later, it makes perfect sense to me. An appendage is something that is attached to or hangs from something larger. Today, you are going to learn about the other bones in the skeletal system. The bones in the legs and arms that hang from your axial skeleton. These bones in your appendages are called appendicular bones because they hang on to larger bones of the body. Let's try saying those words together. Appendicular bones, you say it. Good job. Let's begin near the top of your skeleton with your arm bones. 
What are your arms attached to? What do they hang down from? If you answered shoulders, you are right. Your shoulders are made up of several different bones. Look at this picture to see how arm bones are connected to the axial skeleton. The large, flat, triangular bones that you see in the picture are called scapulae, or shoulder blades. They are sometimes referred to as wings because they stick out from your back. Now, look at this picture. The long bone that connect your scapulae to the top of your rib cage are called clavicles, or collarbones. Short collars cover your collarbones. So I want you to take your hands, friend, and I want you to feel right up here. That's your collarbone. Now let's move down your body to the base of your axial skeleton. How are your legs attached to your spine? Legs need a hanger too. Their hanger is called the pelvis, a group of strong bones illustrated in this picture. Put your hands on your hips and see if you feel the bones that stick out at your sides. So take your hands and about right in here, you should feel some bones right there. Can you feel that? These are your hip bones or your pelvic bones. Your pelvic bones are large bowl-shaped bones that protect your bladder and intestines. Very important organs to help your body function properly. Your pelvis is connected to your spine by the sacrum, a triangular bone that sits between two hip bones of your pelvis. Leg bones and arm bones are a lot alike, but leg bones are thicker and longer than arm bones. In fact, the longest, heaviest, and strongest bone in your entire body is in your leg. Does anyone know the name of that bone? It is your thigh bone and it's called a femur. Can you say femur? Yes, femur. Your femur is connected to your pelvis and extends all the way down to your knee. If you look at the picture, you will see two bones in the lower part of your leg. The larger of the two, the one in the front of the leg is called the tibia or shin bone. The thinner bone behind it is called the fibula. Both the tibia and the fibula connect the knee to the ankle. Now that's a lot of information. I suspect that some of you are wondering how all of these different bones are connected. Sure, they're attached to hangers, the scapulae and the pelvis, but how? Are they all glued in place? Now we know our bones are not glued, but how are they connected? Let's take a look. The point where two bones meet is called a joint. Without joints, your body would not be able to move. There are three main types of joints in your body. Movable, immovable, and partially movable. In other words, movable. That means some joints can move. Immovable, which means some can't move and partially movable, which means some can move a little bit. Let's take a look at all three. The most movable joints in your body are called ball and socket joints. Do this, make a fist with one hand, then wrap your fingers around your fist like this. Your fist, okay, is like the ball in the socket of your hand. This is the ball in the socket of your hand. You can move the fist around easily inside the hand, can't you? You can do this, move it all around. This is the type of joint found in both your hips and your shoulders. Ball and socket joints allow you to swing your arms and legs in full circles. So I want you to stand up and I want you to demonstrate how we can do that. We can do a full circle front a full circle back because right here is the ball and socket joint. Same thing with your leg. You can take your leg and you can move it around. Remember we talked about how the femur is connected here to the pelvic bone so we can move it around. And that's the, how the ball and socket joints work.
other movable joints, called hinge joints, work like the hinges of a door. Your jawbone has hinges. Can you think of other hinge joints in your body, joints that move only back and forth instead of turning in a full circle? Let's think about it a minute. Your fingers, they just move back and forth. What else? Can you think of anything else? Move around and see. Your arms, they just move back and forth. Can you think of anything else? Any other joint? Mm-hmm. Your leg, it just moves back and forth. Now your hip, the pelvic, moves around, but it just moves back and forth. So your knees, your elbow, like we talked about, because we could do it this way or we could do it this way, but it's still basically the same motion. Your ankles, if you flip your ankle up and down or either side to side, but it's very difficult. It really doesn't move all the way around like our shoulders and our arms do. Um, and then we also have our knuckles we talked about. This is your knuckles. These are your knuckles, okay, for friends who might not know that term. Okay, those are all hinge joints. In fact, your knee joint connecting your femur to your tibia and fibula is the biggest and strongest joint in your whole body. It lets your body bend at the knees, and that's very important. Stand up. Now, bend your knees. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine trying to walk without those hinge joints. Can someone demonstrate what you would look like if you could not bend your knees? Because when we're walking, our legs or our knees are bending some, a little. And when we're running, your hinges or your knees, they really bend a lot. So we would be walking like this if we could not bend at the knee. And how would you sit down? your knees would be straight just like this. So our knees are very important and that hinge joint is very important. Some joints permit no movement at all. These are called immovable joints because they lock bones together, forming solid bone as hard as a turtle's shell. Can you think of any axial bones that fit that description? Hmm. Yes, your skull. Your skull is made up of bones that lock firmly in place, allowing no movement where the bones come together. Now, the third type of bone in your body is the partially movable kind. The ones that move a little bit, but not nearly as much as ball and socket joints or hinge joints. Can you think of any example of a partially movable joint in your body? Let's think. Remember when you took a deep breath and you watched your chest move in and out. Let's do that. These joints where your ribs are joined to your breastbone are a good example of partially movable joints. Now, when we were talking in the animal classifications domain, we talked about cartilage. Let's think back to cartilage, the soft, gristled tissue found in your nose and backbone between your vertebrae. Do you remember that? Cartilage is also found at the end of bones where they connect with joints as well. This smooth, elastic tissue serves an important purpose. Try rubbing your palms together. Rub your palms together. Do you feel heat? Yes, if you rub long enough, you feel the heat. If bones and joints rub back and forth together like this with nothing in between, your bones would soon wear out. Instead, a smooth, slippery coating of cartilage covers bones where they meet joints, protecting them and helping them to last longer. That makes me think of a riddle to ask you. Here we go. We are tough straps of strong elastic tissue that bind bones together. Our name has three syllables and comes from a word that means to tie. What are we? 
If you said ligaments, you are correct. Cartilage protects your bones from rubbing together, but another connective tissue acts like straps, wrapping around your joints to actually hold your bones together. These thick cords are called ligaments. Some are round like ropes, others are flat like ribbons. But they are extremely stretchy. Has anyone ever told you that he or she is double jointed? I have heard that before. Double jointed people can bend their fingers farther back than other people, but they don't really have extra joints. The ligaments holding their joints together just stretch farther than normal. Is anyone out there double jointed? I bet some people think they are. Ligaments and protective tissues help prevent injuries to your bones. Nevertheless, bones still get injured and wear out. Humans are very active. Walking, running, jumping, and playing, all those things put stress on your bones. So what happens if you break a leg, sprain an ankle, or dislocate a joint? Often, you must see a doctor, and sometimes your doctor will recommend an x-ray. Now that you have lots of information about the skeletal system, both the axial bones and the appendicular bones, let's take a look at this thing we call an x-ray. These x-rays are of various parts of a human skeleton. An x-ray is an invisible light that can travel through the soft tissues of the body, but not through hard bone. After an x-ray passes through you, a picture is recorded on photographic film. Soft tissues appear black on the film because the x-ray passes right through them. But wherever the x-ray is blocked by bone, white areas appear on the picture, allowing doctors to find breaks more easily. X-rays were invented as a medical tool just over 100 years ago. The next time we meet, we'll discuss another important body system, one that works closely with your skeletal system to move your bones. For ideas of what the next lesson will be, look at my shirt for a clue. We'll find out next time if you're right. Okay, friends, now let's go into some comprehension questions to see how much you remember about the read aloud today. Our first question, what is the point called where two bones meet? What's that term? It's called a joint. A joint is the point where two bones meet. Next question, what are the three main types of joints? I'll give you a clue. Now, if you said arm or legs, that's not exactly what we're talking about. I want you to think of something else. Remember, we said movable, immovable, or partially movable. Our next question, what are appendages on the human body and why are they called appendages? Let's think about that because it was connected to the term appendicular bones. So what does that mean? The arms and legs are called appendages on the body because they hang, like your arms hang, your legs hang, and they are attached to the larger section or the trunk of your body. So just like a tree, you've heard of the term tree trunk, and then we have the branches or the appendages that come from the tree trunk. Well, this is kind of like our trunk. So we've got appendages, our arms, and our legs, which comes from the main part. Good job. Why is cartilage important to the joints? Let's think about that. Now, we talked about cartilage and how on the top of our ear is cartilage or around our ear, and we talked about our nose having cartilage. And we first talked about it when we were doing our classification of animals. Now we know that cartilage has a different purpose. And it is, cartilage covers the bones at the joints and protects the bones from rubbing together, helping them to last longer. Because if there wasn't cartilage, the bones would be together and they would rub and rub and they would wear out much more quickly. And they wouldn't be protected. And now it is time 
for a brain break. All right, so we learned about two different movements that bones make today. So what I need you to do is stand up. Now, we learned about ball and socket. Give me an example of ball and socket. Yes, your shoulders, where those bones meet, and what else? Yes, pelvic, okay? Because they can go around full circle. Then we learned about hinge joints. Because remember, hinge joints, they just move back and forth one way. So I'm going to call out a term. So if I say ball and socket, you either have to move your arm or your leg. If I say hinge, I need you to show me hinge. This is hinge, this is hinge. Your knee just going back and forth like this is hinge. Okay, so you gotta be ready. I'm going fast. All right, ball and socket. And you don't have to do what I'm doing because you can do the leg. There's all kinds of things. Hinge. Ball and socket. Hinge. I'm getting confused. Hinge again. And if I say it back to back, you got to give me something else. Hinge again. Ball and socket. And hinge. Good job. Take a breath, have a seat, and let's get back to work. Okay, friends, let's get back to work. Our word work for today, and our word is appendages. Say that with me once again, appendages. In the read aloud, you heard Ricardo say, today we're going to talk about another big word, appendages. I used to cling to my mother's leg all the time, and I often would hear her say, Ricardo is my little appendage. Say that word again, appendages. Appendages are smaller body parts attached to the main body. Example, spiders are able to crawl around quickly with their eight appendages. Now, how many appendages do insects have and other animals have? Yes, insects have six appendages. How many appendages does a lion have? That would be four. How many appendages does a turtle have? That also would be four. We could think of other animals and how many appendages they would have. So what's the word we've been talking about? Yes, appendages. What part of speech is appendages? Yes, it's a noun. That's exactly right. So friends, you have done a great job today. We have learned about the skeletal system and you have learned about bones and joints. So I will see you next time where we will learn about another system of our amazing body. Goodbye.